All right, welcome to Project Crew Cab 57 Chevy, where we're going to take this junkyard 57 Chevy and we're going to make it run and drive. All right, I'll give you a tour of the 57 here. It is a four door post, obviously. It hasn't been on the road since, I, I believe it was plated in uh, 79 was the last time. And being as there's no motor or transmission in it, can't really tell why it was parked. Um, actually fairly straight, the body, it's got a little bit of rust in the rockers, which is typical, but the glass is in remarkably good shape. Uh, the trunk isn't rotted out, which will show you a little later, which is surprising for this year. Usually the where the spare tire sits, that's completely rotted. Interior is obviously seeing a better day, uh, but we'll go ahead and pull the seats out, do some shop vac magic in here, and uh, see what we can come up with. Bradley's already washing it down. Typically we pressure wash these, but I live in Minnesota, so it's negative 6,000 degrees right now. That's not quite going to work, so we'll get out some soapy water, wash this thing down, and start cleaning. All right, it looks like a booster off the of Chevelle um, on here, the previous owner started. So I think what we're gonna do is go ahead and put some disc brakes on the front of this and uh, see if we can't make that work. We're gonna have to plumb some lines. Uh, of course, these were drum drum, so. Really nothing on the front end. We'll have to figure out cooling. I do have some Camaro and Chevelle parts laying around. We'll see if we can't make that work. Uh, we'll kind of go from there. Tearing into the front end on this, we're going to be putting some disc brakes on it, brake lines. Uh, we'll probably go ahead and put some new springs in here, maybe two or three inches lower. I'm going to scrape some of this heavy grease off and all this built up stuff that's been here for 60 years. It's just going to get in our way and enough of it's fallen in my mouth and I've ate about 60 pounds of this stuff in the past, so I'm going to try to avoid that. So I just use a paint scraper, some screwdrivers, whatever you can. Okay, so we've been after this for quite a bit now, and you can see we've come a long ways. We've got most of the heavy grime and grease off. Um, a lot of the paint came with it, of course, and that's okay. And the inside's all cleaned out. We shot backed it. Uh, eventually, we'll roll this outside and uh, hit it with a pressure washer. Not a lot of rust, actually, a little bit along here. Uh, a little bit back in that corner. Um, this section here is actually not a hole, but over there it is. Uh, these two doors I've adjusted so they actually close properly, which is actually really easy on the older Chevys. This one actually closes very nice as well now. Going to uh, adjust the other sides of the doors, keep doing some cleaning here. Uh, shop crew is just working on the back drums and axle, starting to clean there. So, we'll keep at her. We splurge, we're going to go ahead and get this whole tank out if we can and uh, see how much crap we can get in our mouths here. We're 
gonna have to read that ground to plunge and hear this. wants to beat the piss gas tank for a 57, let me know. Actually, it doesn't look that bad. Trade yourself. So anyway, we made a list today after we got everything cleaned up and out of the car. This is kind of what we're looking at. Um, we've got, the guy's going to try to go ahead and get registration and maybe one of those title things for it. We've got a Dirty Derby 350 or a Plain Jane 350 we're going to pop in it. We've got a transmission two-speed power glide. We'll see if we can throw in here. Um, if something ever goes right in my life, maybe the drive shaft we have will be okay or kind of be close. Brakes and lines. We've got brake booster and pedal to figure out and also the accelerator. Um, these come off of the firewall originally, if I remember correctly. Gas tank, you saw us fighting that today. We'll get that plumbed, figure out if the lines are good. Battery and some sort of switch, or we'll just hang some wires from the dash and blow some sparks and get it started that way. I think that says cooling. We'll make something work. Tires and wheels. And then once all this is done here, uh, time to start doing some burnouts and see if it'll whip some shitties and whatever else. Then we'll figure out stuff like seats and like seat belts and, you know, brake lights and some of the other not important stuff. Uh, we'll try to find some chrome for it and then you know, lastly, we'll try to buff up this old paint, make it look pretty good. So uh, just a reminder to hit the subscribe button and uh, follow along with us and comment below uh, things you want to see or uh, questions or anything like that. Let us know and uh, look forward to having you with us. So I've got a couple of short blocks around here. Uh, I'm going to dig one of those out and what we'll do is we'll just bolt that up to the transmission. We don't have to lug around the full motor right now. And fit it in. We'll bolt up these uh, motor mounts. And then we've got uh, basically just a universal transdap cross member. We'll throw that in there. And I guess start drilling, cut some holes, and see if we can get it permanently mounted. up the trans cross member so we can drill some holes. Actually I might just weld it to be honest because you know that's way more fun. Um, a lot of different opinions on there about driveline angle, transmission angle, and I don't know there's witchcraft and measure tapes and diagrammical engineering and a, you know compass and scroll and all that stuff. And what I like to do is I just like to take my eyeball and just kind of shoot down the old drive shaft and if it looks, you know, like every other car that I've looked at, I I just say, yep, that's good enough and go ahead and just zip this in there and call it good. And Since we're going to be putting some disc brakes on it and we're tearing the front end up anyway, I got some uh, two inch, actually two and a half inch drop springs. Uh, 80 bucks for the pair. You can't really beat that. Yes, you can uh, you can cut these. Um, I may or may not have done that a couple 30 times. Uh, works. You can also heat them. And uh, again, works. Pretty dangerous. Uh, if you want to do it right, get the springs. This is cheap enough, 80 bucks. And then I got some uh, uh, KYB shocks, eBay, 30 bucks, 
Second time I've ordered from this company, second time they screwed up my order. Ordered four, got two, so expect that. But they're cheap, 30 bucks, so we're gonna pop them in. Where we're at is basically waiting for parts at this point. Uh, we've got the new brake lines plumbed in, new master cylinder, brake master cylinder. Use one off a 69 Camaro because it has a disc front and a drum rear. Got all the, those brake lines bent in. That turned out okay. Finished up the disc brake on the other side. Since we cleaned everything earlier in this build, we went ahead and just sprayed it with some uh, spray paint. I actually like using this because it's somewhat affordable and uh, sticks to grease and all the crap that you really don't want to spend time getting off and looks halfway decent. So, um, set in the short block again in transmission to measure the drive shaft because I'm an idiot and I didn't do that the first time. And turns out the length might be okay, but I've got to get a different yoke. The spine count's different. So that's kind of where we're stuck right now. Once I get that drive shaft, um, we'll probably continue on. I might just go ahead and set the Derby 350 in, but we'll kind of see how that goes. Waiting to put any of the front end or any of the sheet metal on until we get the motor in permanently. And then we're gonna figure out the throttle linkage and uh, some of the other smaller stuff, so. Well, I'm giving up on the old column shift. With enough time, it could probably be repaired, but it's blowing my mind and I'm getting really lazy. So I went and picked up this uh, low car shifter on eBay and I've never put one of these in before, but it seems to be pretty straightforward. So all I'm doing is I drilled a pilot hole in the floor where I kind of want my shifter to be. And then I measured back from the cross member bolts to the transmission. I hung my super fancy plumb bob down here and that's how I got my measurement. And then I took uh, my shifter boot bezel and I drew that on the transmission hump here so I wouldn't make my hole too big. Then I'm gonna drill the corners out and then take a death wheel and just jam a hole in the floor and pray that uh, it fits, basically. So this thing isn't quite ready to go in the car yet, but it feels like I've been just rolling around on the ground a lot and just haven't really gotten much done. So I've got the power glide on the floor next to me. I've got new filter gasket cleaned it up. Got the lower car shift bracketry and diagrammical engineering stuff down on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and make the two together and get this in the car because that'll give me plenty to do. Then I can get the front radiator support in, drop the radiator in, wire up the fan, get the hoses on, and then we can start breaking this in and actually getting some milestones done. Plus it'll give me an opportunity to get the shifter through the floor and finish up the interior as well. So all goes well, we'll get that done here pretty quick. Well, I already ran into a snag. Fail number like 79, if you're counting. I literally have like, I have a bucket, a crate of uh, flex plates, and none of them are going to work for this because I need the larger two and a half inch center, but I don't want the 153, I need the 168. Because the block is a 73, and it does not have the starter bolt provisions for this, the uh, smaller diameter flex plate. So I have to run the 168 starter, 
unless I buy a mini starter, but there's no way in heck I'm gonna spend that much money on a mini starter. So, I'm gonna go grab some tacos and pick up a flex plate. Then I'll be back and try it again. Uh, still getting used to this digital camera stuff. I got in such a hurry, I just slammed this in and realized I didn't film it, but it went in uh, really well, easy. And I've still got the transmission cross member bolts and these on the sides here. And this kit is adjustable, so when you tighten them down, they really move. So I have a feeling I'm going to fight that, but I'm going to work this in, fuel pump's a little tight, and uh, some other things to adjust here, but here we go. Newest update is, this is another really bad idea. I got the fire pipes in, and uh, my buddy said they were a Tri-5, and no, no, they, they weren't. Uh, after about 15 minutes and a sledgehammer, now they are. I mean, they fit like factory. Well, getting really close to doing a first engine start here. And the uh, goal is to try to make it the whole 20 minutes during the engine break in without a fire or something leaking horribly bad or going wrong or, you know, the potential for a rod to come through the pan. So I'll kind of give you an update of what I did to get this far here. And uh, now we're going to crank on it and see what we get. So here's how it currently sits. I tried to make my own spark lightning rods, but uh, after I finished one, I realized it took me about 25 minutes and I'm horribly bad. So I grabbed these Scots off of a different motor. Um, Got the wrong radiator off eBay, imagine that. So I took a death wheel and got this here fancy metal and just uh, snipped out my own uh, conversion plate here. Got that on there. Guy went ahead and put a digital fan in there. I didn't know how much clearance I'd have here. Yeah, I didn't feel like messing with it, so I just went with the digital. Plus, I hear a guy can get a couple horsepower extra out of running the digital ones, so that's what we did. Uh, I still need to figure out a battery box. I'll just take the one out of the boat probably and self-tap it in, but here's how it sits. Fingers crossed, I'm gonna crank on her and see what we get. Try it again. Shakedown test went great. Car's running great, didn't get hot. The electric fan's running right now, but that kicks on at uh, 180, so I'm not worried about it. Lots of squeaks and bumps and ticks, which I love. I'm gonna leave those. Uh, stop great, turn great. I'm just gonna enjoy it. This is exactly what I love. This is what I wanted to build. 
and uh, we're going to let it be just like this.